KNBC 9 News starts with breaking news. Thanks for joining us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. We begin with breaking news. The Supreme Court has overturned Roe versus Wade, ending nearly 50 years of constitutional protection for abortion. Jared Hill is in Washington with reaction. The moment this decision came down, overturning the constitutional right to an abortion, you could hear the crowd outside of the Supreme Court uh, let out a scream, just showcasing how emotional of an issue this is. Uh, again, this has been something that's the law of the land for uh, decades, now overturned. We're still going through the opinion, looking at what these justices decided, how they decided uh, what they did here. But this is something that was based specifically out of a case from Mississippi, but will have ramifications across the country. Reporting outside of the Supreme Court, I'm Jared Hill. With this decision coming down, many are wondering, how does this impact me? We do have live team coverage this afternoon in both Kansas and Missouri. Let's head out to our Andy Alcock first. Andy, what's the deal in Missouri? Jamie, Missouri is one of the states with a so-called trigger law as a result of the Supreme Court's ruling today. That trigger law means abortions in the state are effectively banned with the exception of medical emergencies. Let's take a look at the Planned Parenthood building here in Kansas City. A spokeswoman for the organization says as a practical matter though, the new Missouri law won't have much of an impact because very few abortions have been performed in the state for the last several years. The only clinic in Missouri to perform abortions is in St. Louis. As a result, the spokeswoman said many Missouri women seeking that service were either traveling to Kansas or Illinois. With Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt's opinion triggering the new law, he said Missouri this morning became the first state to effectively end abortion. Opinion on this highly polarizing issue varies greatly. As you know, Missouri Senator Josh Hawley praising the Supreme Court ruling with a tweet stating, at long last, Roe is overturned. On the flip side, Emily Wales, she is the president and CEO for Planned Parenthood Great Plains. She said it's a very tough day for women. In particular, she said the Supreme Court's message to women is your body is not your own and your rights depend on what state you live in. Reporting live outside Planned Parenthood in Kansas City, Andy Alcock, KMBC 9 News. When it comes to abortion rights, Kansas is on the opposite side of Missouri. Abortions are currently protected by the Kansas Constitution. KMBC 9's Brian Johnson is live with the impacts that the decision will have there. Jamie, we're outside Planned Parenthood in Overland Park, where today there are demonstrators as well as some armed security. It's likely today's Supreme Court decision going to make facilities like this busier. That's because people will be traveling here from states like Missouri, Oklahoma, and Arkansas to seek services after today's decision. In 2019, the Kansas Supreme Court determined that the Kansas Constitution protects the right to an abortion in many Kansas want to maintain the option to abortion access. Planned Parenthood offers abortion services. They also provide birth control, morning after pills, HIV services, and other health services for women and men. Many people in Kansas also want to restrict access to abortions. Some pro-life groups are leading an initiative called Value Them Both. That is on the August 2nd ballot. It would amend the Kansas Constitution and reduce abortion access if passed. Now that vote is in less than six weeks. That vote is going to be the first vote in the nation since the Supreme Court ruling, and so it's likely going to garner both national attention as well as national money. Live in Overland Park, Brian Johnson, KNBC 9 News. We're going to continue to gather reaction to the overturning of Roe versus Wade. We'll have a much closer look at the impact of this decision in both Kansas and Missouri tonight on KNBC 9 News starting at 4 o'clock. The time right now is 12.03. We do want to get a check of the forecast. Pete, it is Friday. It's been a rainy last few days, <laughs> but you say it should shape up to be a nice weekend. If you notice, Jamie, it's a little different picture than it was earlier this morning. It's all moved to the east. We have a little bit of light, spotty shower activity still continuing. But like I said, very, very small. Now, what we had earlier this morning continues to track eastward and the bulk of it still above and north of I-70. When you look at the metro area, it is rain free mostly. And now we're starting to see a little bit of cloud cover erode away like in Lawrence westward towards Topeka. It's just a matter of time before the clouds give way. Sunshine goes to work for us and we experience a, a decent mid to upper 80s for a high. It's 75 right now, humidity 84%. Our numbers for Smithville at 69, Shawnee at 73, and Grandview at 72. So with the forecast, I expect the cloud cover to slowly erode away this afternoon. Sunshine goes to work. We'll call it about 
88 for a high. And then tonight, looking fairly nice, you're going to the baseball game. It's going to be rather rain free and well, kind of toasty tomorrow. More about that later on. OK, good to know. Thanks, Pete. It's not just Big Slick time. It is Big Slick time live. Our Hollywood favorites are in Kansas City this weekend to raise millions of dollars for Children's Mercy Hospital. The pandemic trimmed back the Big Slick weekend. We know it the last two years, but not this one. The first big event is happening tonight. It's the celebrity softball game at Kauffman Stadium. That's where we find KMBC 9's Martin Augustine. All those Hollywood stars coming to town and especially our local Hollywood stars and Big Slick hosts fired up to get to do all of these events in front of an audience. The first audience will be the softball game here at Kauffman Stadium before the Royals and A's game. It's loads of fun to watch. And then there's the big fundraising show tomorrow night at the T-Mobile Center. It's the centerpiece of the weekend which was done virtually in 2021 and 2022. So the stars can't wait to cut loose live again tomorrow night. Being live, the energy is so much better. It's just the events are fun, getting people to come in town. There's just it, it goes up a notch. It's, it's definitely a level up. So um, it's, it's our chance to show off Kansas City and we love it. Of course, our local stars that are all part of the big slick, Rob Riggle, who you saw there, Paul Rudd, Eric Stone Street, and David Koechner. Now, one who's not here, Jason Sudeikis, he couldn't make it this time around because he's wrapping up production on a little show called Ted Lasso. Reporting from Coffin Stadium, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. Well, we believe Jason Sudeikis will be back next year. That's a little plug to Ted Lasso. You do have two chances to get in on all the fun. As we mentioned, the celebrity softball game at Coffin Stadium takes place this evening. All you have to do is buy a ticket for tonight's Royals game. Then you're in. Gates at the K open at 430. The celebrity softball game starts at 5. Then the Royals will take on the Oakland A's at 715. Ticket prices start around 20 bucks. On Saturday, it is the Big Slick Party and Show at T-Mobile Center. Tickets are still available. They start at 75 bucks. Doors open for that celebration starting at 7. The ATF and Kansas State Fire Marshal's office have completed their investigation into the fire Monday that killed Lynn County firefighter Joshua Haynes. The ATF found that the fire at Carpenter Chiropractic was accidental and evidence from that scene has been sent to their lab in order to help determine the cause of the fire. The community is invited to remember the life of Haynes at a visitation next Tuesday, June 28th from 4 to 7. That'll be at Pleasanton High School. A funeral with full honors will be held Wednesday, June 29th at 10 in the morning. That'll also be at the high school. Both events are open to the public. We are learning new details about the people killed in a house fire in Overland Park. This happened early Sunday morning here near 103rd and Westgate. The fire department says 34-year-old Tammy Matsuyo and 37-year-old Adam Fetters were killed. The two were engaged. We spoke to a family that knows Tammy well. She was an au pair for Polly Rivera for two years. They say Tammy came from Bolivia, so now the Rivera family is helping her grieving family travel to the U.S. for a final goodbye. I would like to help in the way that Tammy would have helped my family. If the situation were reversed. The family also started a GoFundMe page to help with funeral expenses. We've got that link on our website, canbc.com. Overland Park, po Overland Park Fire says one other person was hurt in this uh, blaze, but they are expected to be okay. 2K U stars are living their NBA dreams. Ochai Abaji and Christian Brown both heard their names called in the first round last night in the 2022 draft. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Ochai Abaji from the University of Kansas. Former Oak Park High School star Ochai Abaji was the number 14 pick overall to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ochai was not heavily recruited coming out of Oak Park High School. He landed at Kansas and helped lead the Jayhawks to an NCAA championship. Now he's focused on doing the same for the Cavs. I just all the, all the hard work um, that's gone into, you know, to get to this point. Um, you know, I'm thankful for my parents, all the support system around me, and, uh, you know, I'm just blessed. What have you seen in your son that allowed this moment to be realized? Oh, goodness. Just a hard worker. He just, I mean, puts so much work. I know, right? <laughs> I'll take a couple. <laughs> um, he just puts so much hard work into, you know, everything, and it's paid off. Soon after Ochai's big announcement, his teammate Christian Brown got some big news. He's headed to the Mile High City. The Denver Nuggets select Christian Brown from the University of Kansas. 
Great to see another local kid make it big. Brown, who first played at Blue Valley Northwest, was the 21st pick to the Denver Nuggets. After KU's big win, many projected Brown would be an undrafted free agent if he stayed in the draft. But after testing the NBA waters, his stock quickly rose. Obviously, he made the right call. Man, it feels great. I'm just grateful for the support. You know, Coach Love being here and just all, all my people that are here. Um, I'm just grateful for all those people, and uh, it feels great. They're getting a competitor, a toughness, uh, a guy that knows how to play, and, and his ceiling is still way up here. So uh, uh, I think everybody in, uh, associated with that organization has got to be pretty happy right now. KU head coach Bill Self didn't miss either of his guys' big moments. He went backstage to celebrate with Ochai, then he quickly made it back out to be there for Christian Brown. A big congrats to all of those uh, players. Kelly Clarkson gets an encore. Coming up next, we sit down with a talk show host as she prepares for a fourth season and a move to a new time on KMBC. Waiting on the World Cup, Missouri's governor preparing years in advance. The bill he signed into law to help Kansas City as it hits the international stage. Getting it right when it's happening right now. Breaking news coverage from KNBC 9 News, leading the way. A new task force in Clay County is targeting human trafficking and child exploitation. Three sheriff's deputies are working with a local nonprofit, Relentless Pursuit, to get predators into custody and get victims the help they need. The sheriff is urging the community to be on alert and report any suspicious activity that could be tied to human trafficking and exploitation, even on social media. There's no mistake. 
that does happen here. We just don't get to see it as often because nobody wants to admit that we have those problems, but we do. We had our record day last week. It was 45 girls came through in one day. We just kind of wanted to be a spot where they could come feel safe. We're still just scratching the surface, but we're definitely on the right path. Relentless Pursuit also offers housing, medical, and employment services. In the task force's first sting this month, which was done with federal agents, it was in an operation called Blue Ghost. We know that six men were arrested for seeking sex with a young girl after undercover detectives posed as a 14-year-old online. If you would like to donate to Relentless Pursuit's efforts, go to rpor.org. Miniature goats may soon be allowed in the city of Raytown, but the city wants homeowners to weigh in on that proposal. If the plan is approved, each property would need one acre of space for every two goats to roam. A maximum of four goats would be allowed. You can weigh in on the city's website where there's also a copy of that proposal. All comments will then be discussed at a city planning and zoning meeting that's set for July 7th. Celebrations continue today for Pride Month at PNL. It is Food Truck Friday at 14th and Main. That means food trucks are going to be serving up meals until 2 this afternoon. As Pride Month comes to a close, members of the LGBTQ plus community say it's important to keep the conversation about awareness and progress going. KMBC 9's Cody Holyoke does just that on this week's edition of Heart of the Matter. Pride Month is a time to honor the history and heritage of the LGBTQ plus community and to celebrate progress in the fight for equal justice and equal opportunity. We've seen a number of events honoring Pride in our community this month, including Kansas City's Pride Fest Parade. Members of this community tell me they are thankful for the support, but worried about what the future holds, especially as their rights are increasingly under attack. And now my wife and I are getting nervous that the political climate is going to the spot where we might not even be a recognized marriage class. This week on Heart of the Matter, see how the fight for progress is being threatened and why that battle goes well beyond the month of June. We'll also discuss the fallout and strategy of a new campaign ad from Eric Reitens as we watch the impact it could have on the Missouri U.S. Senate race. And we'll get answers for parents about the new coronavirus vaccines just made available for kids under five years old. We'll see you then. Be sure to tune in for Heart of the Matter this Sunday at 11 on KMBC 9. Missouri's governor is hoping to help keep ticket prices down when the 2026 Men's World Cup matches come to Kansas City. On Thursday, Governor Mike Parson signed a bill into law that will make FIFA's tickets exempt from sales tax. Parson says hosting the tournament won't just help Kansas City, but it will help the entire region. However, there is still a lot of work to do. When you put on a World Cup event, it's not something somebody just goes in there and puts something on a map and says, hey, let's go here. You know, this city's got to be ready for it. This state's got to be ready for it. And we got a lot of work to do. There's no doubt about that. But I guarantee you we'll be prepared. Studies show Kansas City could see a boom of about $480 million for hosting the World Cup. Rolling up your sleeves is all it takes to get a free ticket to a Royals game. The team is partnering with the Community Blood Center to help meet a shortage in blood supplies. Starting on Sunday, donors at Community Blood Centers will get the choice of two Royals ticket vouchers or a limited edition Royals t-shirt. That offer will run through July 9th. It is one of the most popular daytime talk shows around, but some changes are coming to the Kelly Clarkson show. Starting on Monday, it will now air at 3 o'clock on KMBC 9. Our own Kelly, Kelly Uckerman, spoke with the celebrity host about what's ahead as she gears up for season four. Clarkson came to fame as an award-winning singer-songwriter, but her success certainly didn't end there. She's been renewed for her fourth season of The Kelly Clarkson Show on KNBC and tells me she's proud of what her show is bringing to daytime television. Ready for a good time? It's a talk show, but there will always be music in the lineup. You can count me in, Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> from her guests. Since you've been gone. And from Kelly herself. It's just you. She brings on the biggest stars. I'm nervous. I'm sweating. Why are you standing your bullet? Because I'm a huge fan. Well, you're but her show also takes time each day to spotlight everyday heroes. Maybe you needed a new car. And that was important to her in creating the show. Finding out all these amazing, extraordinary humans that are doing these simple yet highly effective things in their community that you can implement in your community. Um, and that's like, it's ideas, right? It's sharing those ideas. Kelly's excited about her fourth season in the fall, but even before that, she's in for a change, moving to the three o'clock time slot on KMBC, leading in to KMBC 9 News at 4. She says she has a soft spot for KC. Greatest initials in all of the lands. <laughs> 
I love Kansas City. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I love y'all so much. I've always loved, it's one of my favorite places to stop on tour, actually, um, for the food and the fans. So thank y'all so much for the support and thank y'all for watching. Kelly Eckerman, KMBC 9 News. Clarkson has won the Daytime Emmy for Outstanding Entertainment Talk Show host for the last two years straight. Again, her show moves to 3 o'clock on KMBC 9 starting Monday, followed immediately by KMBC 9 News at 4. Time right now is 1220. We want to get another check of the forecast because, Pete, we dealt with a lot of rain all morning long. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to it clearing out because I know I have plans to head out to the Big Slick Celebrity Softball game mm -hmm. and stick around for the Royals. And the good news is it continues to track east for Jamie. I mean, look at it. It's now approaching in areas of central Missouri. You come back towards Kansas City, it is very quiet. That might be a leftover light shower at most, and that is it. And as expected, not only is it continue to move away from us, but we'll have the cloud cover slowly uh, departing, and then we'll have some sunshine later on this afternoon. As of right now, though, it's been kind of comfortable all morning long. We have been hovering around 71. Now we're starting to see the thermometer reading go up a little bit. We're at 75 downtown. Humidity at 84%, and the wind speed's about 14 miles an hour. Downtown's at 72, heat index at 73. So the heat index hasn't been much of a factor today because of the rain and the cloud cover, obviously, but that will be a huge impact come tomorrow as we start out our weekend. As of right now, those 75 and Leavenworth, 74 in St. Joseph, with the rain to the east of us, like Marshall, Sedalia, 66 in Marshall, you can see the rainfall having an impact there, uh, cooling it off at 69 in Chillicothe and Trenton at 70. And you kind of get the idea when you look at the clouds and radar combined, how that's just continuing to move eastward. You see a little bit of breaks in the clouds, especially around Topeka and westward. In fact, a little farther out, look at it. You go from Topeka westward, we see hardly anything at all. So that means, yes, once we get our sunshine in here this afternoon, then it's going to be mostly quiet and clear all the way through tonight and most of your tomorrow. Notice I said most. More about that in just a second. Sun and clouds this afternoon. Sunshine will help us get up to about 88 for the afternoon high. Wind speeds about 10 to 15 miles an hour. If you're heading out this evening, it will be dry conditions. Going to the Royals game, dry conditions, okay? No threat of any rainfall. Temperatures dropping back down to about 82 at 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock around 80 degrees. Our highs for Saturday, this is where it gets different, 92 and then 94, and then we'll have a heat index value around 104 to 106. So on the nine-day forecast, the rest of this afternoon, clearing skies. There's your impact day because of scattered storms late tomorrow night, mostly in the evening hours, but then a heat index value about 104 to 106. Then cooler air works its way in on Tuesday, I'm, I'm sorry, Sunday and Monday, Cooler conditions with rain showers in 79. It sticks with 79 for a high early next week, and then we slowly rebound nicely. But overall, temperatures next week, at least for the most uh, part of it, is going to be below normal. And it's been a while since we said something like that, Jamie. Yeah, seriously, it's been a long time since we've heard that. A local woman wins an award named for the ultimate adventurer. Coming up next at noon, we'll explain the incredible feats of human strength that earned her this honor.
Bilateral amputee and world-class mountaineer won a major award for her pioneering achievements. Smithville native Go Mandy Horvath won a 2022 Amelia Earhart Award. This is given to women who embody Earhart spirit. Horvath has climbed Mount Kilimanjaro without the help of prosthetics and the world's tallest natural pyramid in Colombia. I came to a point in my life where it was do something or don't and that don't was a very dark end and I wanted to help other people. Mandy will get $10,000 to donate to charities of her choice. This is all part of the annual Amelia Earhart Festival, which happens in her hometown of Atchison, Kansas. Shawnee is starting its Independence Day celebrations early today with the annual parked event at Stump Park. It features food trucks, live music, fun activities, and vendors. Plus, of course, the grand finale for the night is a fireworks display. Parked runs from 5.30 to 9.30 tonight. It is free to attend. Outside of Parked, the residents of Shawnee are only allowed to set off fireworks on July 3rd and the 4th between the hours of 10 a.m. and 11 p.m. Bottle rockets, M80s, and sky lanterns are all banned. Fireworks can only be fired from specific areas, and they can't be near gas stations or firework stands. For a full list of rules, you can head to the City of Shawnee's website. And for a full list of firework shows and rules where you live, you can head to our website, KMBC.com, and click on the Local News tab. Starting on Monday, changes are coming to some of your favorite KMBC 9 shows. Tamarin Hall, The View, and GMA3 will all air an hour earlier. KMBC 9 news at noon, which you're watching right now, is moving from KCWE to Channel 9. And in the afternoons, the Ellen DeGeneres show will move to 2 p.m., followed by the Kelly Clarkson show at 3. Of course, stick around for KBC 9 News at 4. All of these changes take effect on Monday. Taking a live look across the metro, still dealing with a little bit of rain, but Pete Grigsby says it's moving out soon. He'll tell you when, coming up.
committed to serving the residents of Kansas and Missouri. KMBC 9 News, leading the way. Thanks for sticking with us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. Pete Grigsby has your first alert forecast. And Pete, I'm looking forward to a nice weekend after all the rain moves through. <laughs> well, it's kind of a, a mixed bag, Jamie. I mean, we had the rainfall and impact hours this morning. Rain is moving out, but now we're talking about uh, getting very heated by tomorrow and then cooling off Sunday. So it's every day is a little different. So let's start with this uh, this afternoon. First of all, the rainfall we got this morning continues to track eastward and away from us. I mean, still quite a bit of rainfall hitting central Missouri, but when you look at Kansas City, eastern Kansas, western Missouri, only a couple of little light spots left, and that is it. It looks like the cloud cover slowly eroding away. When you look at like uh, Lawrence westward along I-70, we see the clearing sky. So it's just a matter of time before we start getting the sunshine really going to work and help warm things up a bit. But right now with still some overcast skies in downtown, we're at 75 degrees, humidity 84%. Heat index has not been a factor at all today, but it will be tomorrow. That's kind of a heads up on that. And our wind speeds anywhere from about, uh, let's say, 10 to 15 miles an hour from the east southeast direction. If you are heading out tonight, it is going to be dry, rain free conditions, and temperature actually rising a bit until we get about 8 o'clock in the evening. So, what are we talking about forecast wise? Well, right now, though, we're at 75 for Platte City, 73 for Smithville, and Liberty at 70. But with the sunshine peeking through, it's going to push us up to the mid to upper 80s around 5 to 6 o'clock later this afternoon. But that'll set the pace for a decent evening once you get past sunset and a very comfortable night. Rain showers and thunderstorms return by tomorrow night. And before that even moves in, we're talking about a heat index of triple digit heat. Yes, we're back to that. More about that coming up in our 9 day forecast. All right, thanks, Pete. We are still covering the latest on the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade. President Biden spoke to the nation in the past hour, criticizing the decision, saying the health and life of women is at risk. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest from Washington. <laughs> Real-time reaction to the high court's decision overturning Roe v. Wade, striking down the constitutional right to abortion, leaving that decision for states to decide. At the White House, President Biden weighing in on the court's decision. The court has done what it has never done before, expressly take away a constitutional right that is so fundamental to so many Americans. Stepped up security and barricades set up around the court complex where crowds gathered for the opinion. Abortion has been a constitutional right for nearly five decades, but with a 6-3 conservative majority on the court, abortion rights supporters have feared it would only be a matter of time before Roe v. Wade was overturned. According to a leaked Supreme Court draft opinion obtained by Politico in May and confirmed as authentic by Chief Justice John Roberts, a majority of justices voted to end federal protections for abortions and let states make their own abortion laws instead. Justice Samuel Alito writing for the majority in the draft stating that Roe was wrongly decided. Abortion rights supporters immediately expressing alarm. Be aware of this. The Republicans are plotting a nationwide abortion ban. Thousands took to the streets to protest as soon as the leak happened, some even demonstrating outside the homes of conservative justices. 26 states were poised to quickly move to severely restrict access to abortion or ban it outright. 13 have already passed so-called trigger laws that would ban the procedure once Roe is struck down. The right to life has been vindicated. Around the nation, a number of Democrat-led states are expanding abortion rights access to make it easier for women to travel to those states for the procedure. Of course, the Supreme Court decision now leaves the abortion issue up to each individual state to decide. KMBC's Andy Alcock takes a look at the impact in Missouri. Missouri is one of the states with a so-called trigger law. It means the Supreme Court ruling today triggers a law passed in 2019, which ends abortion in the state with the exception of medical emergencies. A spokeswoman for Planned Parenthood says a, as a practical matter, the new Missouri law isn't gonna have much of an impact because very few abortions have been performed in the state for the last several years. The only clinic in the state to perform abortions is in St. Louis, and we're told they haven't done very many. As a result, the spokeswoman said many Missouri women seeking that service were either traveling to Kansas or Illinois. With Missouri Attorney General Eric Schmidt's opinion triggering the new law, he said Missouri this morning became the first state to effectively end abortion. 
And as we know, opinion on this highly polarizing issue varies greatly. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley praising the Supreme Court ruling with a tweet stating, at long last, Roe is overturned. On the flip side, the president and CEO of Planned Parenthood Great Plains, Emily Wales, called it a very tough day for women. In particular, she believes this Supreme Court ruling is telling women all over the country their bodies are not their own and their rights depend on what state they live in. At Planned Parenthood in Kansas City, Andy Alcock, KMBC 9 News. When it comes to abortion rights, Kansas is the opposite of Missouri. Abortions are currently protected by the Kansas Constitution. KMBC 9's Brian Johnson has the impacts that the decision will have there in the state. Yeah, we're outside the Planned Parenthood in Overland Park, where today there are some demonstrators as well as armed security. Facilities like this one are likely to get busier because of today's ruling. Folks from Oklahoma, Arkansas, as well as Missouri seeking services could likely travel here because of a 2019 ruling by the Kansas Supreme Court that determined that the Kansas Constitution protects the right to an abortion. Many in Kansas want to maintain the option to abortion access. Planned Parenthood offers abortion services. They also provide birth control, morning after pills, HIV services, and other health services for women and men. Many people, though, in Kansas want to restrict access to abortions. Some pro-life groups, they are leading an initiative called Value Them Both. That's on the August 2nd primary ballot. It would amend the Kansas Constitution and reduce abortion access if passed. That vote is in less than six weeks and will likely garner both national attention as well as money as it is the first vote on abortion after the Supreme Court ruling. In Overland Park, Brian Johnson, KNBC 9 News. We will continue to gather reaction to the overturning of Roe v. Wade. We'll have a much closer look at the impact of the decision in Kansas and Missouri tonight on KNBC 9 News starting at 4. An Overland Park couple is dead in what police believe was a murder-suicide. Detectives say 87-year-old Frank Mayfield shot and killed his 87-year-old wife, Donna, before turning the gun on himself. Investigators tell us Frank called 911, saying his wife had been shot. When police got to their home, they found the garage door open and found Donna Mayfield's body in a hospital-type bed. Frank's body and a gun were found nearby. Neighbors we spoke to are still shocked that this happened. I'm really, you know, shook. And as soon as I walked out here, I saw all this and I was like, mm, you know, but I'm kind of kind of heartbroken from it. We also spoke to the couple's son in law off camera. He says he believes Frank just didn't want to care for his wife any longer. The family of a young murder victim is taking an active role in helping police find answers. Kansas City, Missouri police found a 20 year old Caitlin Mehurin uh, shot to death in her home near 26th and Cypress. This was early Monday morning. Kansas City mothers in charge join Mehurin's family to canvas the neighborhood yesterday to look for leads. She was a young woman. You know, she was to me, she was a young, she was a child to me. She was just only 20 years old. Her life was taken Juneteenth morning here, early in the morning. Gunshots rid her home while she was at home where she should have been safe. If you know anything that could help investigators find Caitlin's killer, you can call the Crime Stoppers Tips hotline. That number is 816-474-TIPS. One person is fighting for their life after a hit and run in Kansas City, Missouri. A driver told police a woman was standing in the road at Independence Ave and Indiana Ave around 2.30 Thursday morning. The driver didn't see the woman and hit her. Then police say the driver of a second car going in the opposite direction hit that woman again. That driver took off. Medics rushed the woman who was badly hurt to the hospital. The city of Independence is asking for your help after dangerous vandalism occurred at one of its parks. According to a post on Facebook, people threw more than 80 glass bottles at McCoy Park Wednesday night, spreading broken glass all over the park's spray ground. The city says 18 park workers had to spend hours cleaning up this mess. It will be reviewing patrol schedules in the area, but city officials are just asking that you report any suspicious or criminal behavior directly to police. The countdown is on for the August primary happening on August 2nd. Voters in Missouri and Kansas both head to the polls in just about 38 days. A new Republican super PAC is spending more than a million dollars on ads that target Missouri Senate candidate and former governor Eric Reitens. Show Me Values will run TV ads through the end of June across the state and will stay involved through the August 2nd primary. A representative says the ads will focus on Greitens' previous scandals. 
Crichton's ex-wife, Sheena, is asking Eric to denounce his recent campaign video in which he and a tactical team broke into a home armed talking about hunting so-called rhinos or Republicans in name only. That's a political buzzword. Attorneys say Sheena Greitens had received serious threats since that video came out. She's scared. This has not happened before. This video suggests the use of violence towards all rhinos. It's been denounced by the Fraternal Order of Police. It's been denounced widely and it has created a situation where others may perceive it as a call to arms and that's been directly sent to her. The former couple is going through custody hearings. Eric Greitens was not in the courtroom yesterday. His lawyer was there to represent him. They're due back in court for those custody hearings on July 15th. Stay tuned to this week's edition of Heart of the Matter. We'll explore the implications, the fallout, and the strategy of Greitens' ad and what's next in the race. Heart of the Matter airs Sunday morning at 11 on KMBC 9. The Big Slick is back in full swing this year. Coming up next at noon, see how you can take part in this weekend's celebrity fundraising event to benefit Children's Mercy Hospital. It is Big Slick Weekend with big Hollywood stars raising money for Children's Mercy Hospital. The fun starts tonight with the celebrity softball game at Kauffman Stadium. That's where we find KBC 9's Martin Augustine. And Martin, this year, it's the Big Slick as we remember it. It'll be a big treat to see all those Hollywood stars again, especially after the abbreviated Big Slick weekends of the last two years. So right out of the gate, we get that softball game here at Kauffman Stadium before the Royals and A's game. Of course, the softball players we're rooting for the most, local Hollywood stars Rob Ringle, Paul Rudd, Eric Stone Street, and David Koechner, who can't wait to perform for us this weekend after two long years of what was essentially a virtual fundraising weekend. The lifeblood is live. The, the, the reason life's worth living is so you can get out and engage and do amazing activities and have amazing people come to this town experience how amazing Kansas City is. One name you didn't hear there, Jason Sudeikis. He's always been a part of this too, but he couldn't make it this year as he's wrapping up production on his very popular and award-winning show, Ted Lasso. Reporting from Coffin Stadium, Martin Augustine, KBC 9 News. You have two chances to get in on the big slick fun. As we mentioned, the celebrity softball game at Kauffman Stadium is right before tonight's Royals game. A ticket to the Royals will get you into the softball game. The celebrity game will start at 5. Then the Royals take on the Oakland A's at 7.15. Ticket prices start around 20 bucks. Then on Saturday, it is the big slick party and show at T-Mobile Center. Tickets are still available. They start at $75. Doors open for that celebration at 7 o'clock. 
creating safe spaces, how having a place to be yourself is making a difference in Kansas City. This month, Project Community is all about pride and highlighting some of the local resources for the LGBTQ plus community. KBC 9's Emily Holwick visited the Kansas City Center for Inclusion and found a welcoming space for people of all ages. This is a place where authenticity is celebrated. I reached out because I was looking for an affirming support group. group that affirmation is something Keaton Vaughn found when they got involved with the Kansas City Center for Inclusion, a resource and support hub for the LGBTQ plus community in Kansas City. I am non-binary and transgender and I wanted to meet other people like me and see what, you know, what are they experiencing, what are they going through. It's changed my life. You know, there's no other way for me to say it. Vaughn is now the center's incoming president, hoping to help others looking for connection. We want to check in with the community and see, you know, what can we do to help you feel connected to each other? Are there needs we can help meet for you? The center offers resources from health and employment to legal aid. It's open to people of all ages and recently hosted an equality teen prom. You know, that's something I didn't have as a kid and being able to offer that to people, it just... I mean, it was amazing to be there and see the smiles on those kids' faces. The center also offers support groups like the Equal Trans Support Group, which Vaughn leads. They've witnessed the impact firsthand. Seeing people just become happier, become more confident, and, and seeing them transform basically into who they're meant to be, it really is, it's amazing. Vaughn encourages anyone seeking that sense of authenticity and belonging to reach out. Everyone needs different things, so we want to be there for whoever needs our help. Emily Hallwick, KMBC 9 News. The Kansas City Center for Inclusion is funded completely by donations and grants. If you would like to support their efforts and learn more, you can visit inclusivekc.org. The City of Independence is honoring the past while looking to the future. Leaders rededicated Hiram Young Park on Thursday. Young was born a slave, then gained his freedom. He became one of the richest men in Independence by building wagons used on the Oregon, California, and Santa Fe trails. The park has been around for years, but fell into disrepair. Folks in town are excited to have it back. And this was just a feel, actually a feel. That was a feel also because the police department hadn't expanded and said that they would give us this uh, park and name it Hiram Young Park. That was 30 some years ago. And then it became in disarray. 
The rededication was part of the city's Juneteenth celebrations. The Screenland Armor Theater in North Kansas City is bringing back VHS tapes. This is part of their new basement bar called Rewind Video and Retro Dive. It is open Thursday through Saturday, and you can only get in from behind the building. You look for a VHS logo on a white glass door. We all struggle with the, you know, you're on Netflix and you're just like going through hours of just scrolling and you're like, am I going to watch something or am I just going to scroll? And you know, that all started at the video store. And the video store is, uh, is the birthplace of, of the, the, the stroll, right? And the search for the lost or hidden gem. And so we want to bring that back. I love that bringing back VHS tapes, going well, retro. You well, gotta did they, love it. Did VHS ever leave? I won't answer that. I'll let you talk about the forecast <laughs> okay. instead. Oh, it was a, okay, never mind. Uh, thunderstorm activity continues to track eastward, away from us. So we had the scattered rainfall, thunderstorms, and now they're moving away. It looks like we're looking at the clearing skies to the west, and it looks as though if you're going to be out and about, you don't have to worry about any rainfall or scattered showers, all right? And not until, let's say, tomorrow night. So we got about almost a uh, about a 30 hour window now before your next chance of any rainfall. As of right now, though, cloud cover still remains over downtown Kansas City. We're at 75 degrees, humidity at 84%, wind speeds about 14 miles an hour. Let's compare that number to areas like downtown in Olathe, 72, 76. The uh, heat index value hasn't been much of a factor today until now. We're starting to see the numbers click up a little bit because as you get a little sunshine this afternoon, those numbers will climb, but it really won't be that bad this afternoon. Uh, 71 in Lee Summit, Warrensburg 73, Sedalia at 75, a little cooler where the rain has been, and Leavenworth's up to 75, Lawrence 76. Clearing skies, when you look at like Lawrence westward, we're seeing that now. In fact, it's going to be quiet all across most of Kansas. Not much off the horizon, so once this moves on through and out of here, then we'll have the clearing skies and sunshine and an afternoon probably around 87 to 88. Wind speeds 10 to 15 miles an hour. Rest of the evening, not bad. Temperatures uh, rather comfortable, really. Uh, 82 degrees for 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at 80 with clear skies. And let's talk about tomorrow because it's your next impact day. Reason why is because not only will we have a heat index of 104 with a temperature of 95, but some strong thunderstorms move in as a cold front moves through by tomorrow evening, sparking the thunderstorms. But look what that does. It leaves you with some Light rain on Sunday with a high of only 79. Cooler air for Monday after dropping to 59 for the morning start of 79. And most of early next week into midweek, temperatures actually below normal. We will be right back.
Clearing skies this afternoon, sunshine going to work for us. A high that later today will be around 88 degrees. Now tonight, comfortable, dropping down to 76 tomorrow morning. But then we have another impact day tomorrow. It's going to be a hot day, 95 degrees with the heat index around 104. That's why we have as an impact. A few scattered thunderstorms tomorrow evening because of a cold front coming through. That's going to lead to cooler air for Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Look at your morning start 68, 59, 60 and daytime highs. We're talking 79 and up to 82 on Tuesday. Well, thank you so much for joining us at noon. A reminder, this is our final newscast on KCWE at noon. You can catch us at noon on KMBC 9 starting on Monday.